See, I knew I did something wrong. So I had the mute button and I was talking. So welcome to day 11 of the build a store in 21 days e-commerce challenge. Hope you guys are doing well on this beautiful Monday. Um, already 11 days, so 10 days left and we're gonna finish and hopefully launch your online store. Today's topic is uh, creating navigation menus uh, for your online store. So those who are joining in right now, please let me know in the comments, um, say hi. And also let me know, do you hear me well now? Everything is good on your side. You see my screen, um, would love to hear from you. So by the time I set myself up here, let me just put things together. Every time I go online, you know, you got to set up a bunch of things. want to make sure that everything is properly done. Okay. Excellent. All right. How's everybody doing? I see some familiar faces. Excellent. Hey, Aya. Nice to see you. Katrina. Felicitas. Ithar. Good to see you guys. Thank you for joining in. So we'll just wait for like a minute for people to connect. Everyone gets notified. It's going to be a short lesson too. I always say that, but then I end up just wanting to give more. So, all right, let's do this. Perfect. Let me share my screen so that we get started. All right. Excellent. There we go. Perfect. What's up, Ali? Beautiful day here in Montreal today. Uh, we had, it was a little bit windy, I think. Um, but overall, it was a good weather. How's the weather with you guys, uh, wherever you are in the US, in Canada? Cold night, yeah. It's, it's, it was, yeah, windy. Um, honestly, Saturday was just a beautiful day. Um, but overall, can't complain. You know what? Health. Uh, if you got your health right now, that's what matters most at this point. Hey, Ali. Good to have you here. All right. So let's get started. And let's learn a new topic called... And today, we're going to cover the topic of creating navigation menus for your online store. So the whole point of creating a navigation menu is to allow uh, people to literally browse your shop, go through your product catalog, easily navigate from one page to the other, uh, find answers to specific questions they may have about your store, your shipping, they need, might need help. So really, when you think about it, it's kind of like a, a, a simply a, a, a easy way of navigating your online store uh, quickly from one spot, which usually is the header of your online store. So if I show you my demo store um, right here, this is the typical menu that people are accustomed to used to seeing inside an online store. Sometimes it could be on the right hand side. A lot of times it could be in the middle or uh, under the logo right here, depending on the theme or the design of your online store. So as always, I want to give you a couple of tips of things that you need to consider when thinking about creating those menus for your online store. So there are two areas that you need to focus on, which is the header, the top of the website right here. And you also have to create menus for the footer of the website right here in the bottom. Obviously, um, the, you want you want to make sure that they're somewhat different. You don't want to have just a duplicate of the same links on top and, and in the bottom. Usually, what we do is the menu on top focuses on the overall navigation of the website. So you welcome people, you allow them to browse all of your categories, some collections, brands, and also have access to uh, specific pages that would matter to them. For example, your contact page, your help page, um, about page, and so on. The footer is more focused around, let's say, for example, you want to provide additional links to additional resources that may not be as important as, let's say, a collection page or an about page or a, uh, um, a product page. You really want to, it's not something that everyone is clicking on. It's not something that everyone will be looking for, but you want to make sure it's still possible for people to reach those pages 
through the footer. A lot of times the footer would be uh, linked to specific, let's say, legal pages, your terms and conditions, your contact page, um, learn more about the business. Let's say you sell, um, you have offers for corporate companies only, and you want to offer that. Most of your customers, for example, are the average consumer, but you might have a program for companies or wholesale division. Uh, you don't need to have that in your main navigation. You may want to put it in the footer. And so that's why you have to really evaluate. Today, I'm going to show you what type of menu items you need to consider in your main navigation as well as your footer. And we're also going to create them. So one other thing that we have to consider is think mobile first. Again, more than 60% of your traffic is going to come in from a mobile device. Uh, that could be either a smartphone or a tablet. So when you're creating a menu, you don't want to start making it this massive thing that eventually overwhelms consumers when they're browsing your store through a smartphone. Remember, the real estate on the screen is very, very small. You need to make sure that the menu would fit in, and you don't want to make it really difficult for people to get to the pages. Like They have to tap a couple of times until they reach it. You don't want that to happen. So we have to really think about mobile users when creating those menus. Do not overwhelm shoppers, meaning don't start adding links to every single page inside the menu, whether it's navigation or footer. Remember, sometimes pages link between themselves. For example, I might click on help. The help page, if I click on it, the help page will be linked to the shipping page, will link it to the payments page, to the returns policy. You have pages that link to other pages as people start consuming the content. So you don't need to put every single link in both menus. Be strategic and think about the consumer first. So the approach that I usually say go with, to go with is start simple. Put, a, put the most important pages there. When you launch your store and you start getting traffic, and questions from customers through either email, live chat. If they start asking you questions about shipping, we're going to put the shipping, but that wasn't a good example. Let's say they ask about your wholesale uh, um, options, let's say. They want to buy in bulk from you. And you start seeing more and more and more people are asking about this, then it makes sense to add this page in your footer because people are asking. You don't want to miss out on opportunities or miss out on consumers that may be lazy and not even reach out to you if they need to find information about those things. So you start creating these links inside your menus as you start conducting business, but you rely on feedback, you start looking at analytics. There's a lot of ways of doing that. So again, keep it simple, start small, and then afterwards start adding additional ones. Now, what should you link? Again, just a reminder, pages. You want to add links to pages. You want to add links to collections. Um, you want to add links sometimes to products, depending on, let's say, you might have the deal of the day and you want to maybe send people directly to the product page. That could be an, op uh, an option. So again, all of those things that we've been creating over the last couple of days, this is where you will need to use them and link them across your navigation. Hence the reason why I left this lesson at this point on day 11. Sounds good. Any questions so far uh, while I uh, start setting up for showing you how this whole thing will work? So um, what we're going to do right now is go inside the store. Um, I'm going to start creating a bunch of pages, uh, work, a bunch of links in the menus. I'll show you how things work. And this way you could do this on your own within your online store. Let me just make sure to see if there's anything in the comments. Excellent, I don't see any questions. Perfect, let's continue then. All right, so we're gonna go inside your store and under online store, oh, let me just increase the size, make it easy, there we go. Inside your online store, um, right here on the left-hand side, you click on navigation. So by default, uh, Shopify would have already created for you a main menu and also a footer menu. So I'm going to leave those there, but what I'm going to do for the purpose of this exercise, I'm just going to delete everything. So we redo this from scratch just to show you how easy it is to, so I clicked on, that's how you delete items in your menu, just in case. So we already covered one thing. Um, let me go inside the menu now. Let me, oh, I'm going to leave the search because I don't want to lose links to it. So usually you see that by default. Excellent. And save this. So that's how you delete things, menu uh, links inside your menus. 
Now, obviously you could have multiple menus in your online store. So you might have main menu, let's say throughout the year. And during the holidays, you might have a main menu that is specific for the holiday period. And instead of you having to create one from scratch, you can have two versions of it. And then as soon as the holidays kick in, for example, switch the menu. Maybe one of them will be already prepared with the right, let's say the Cyber Monday or Black Friday sale there. So this way you don't have to recreate them every single time and maybe make uh, create some errors or miss some links and you might forget things. So that's another tactic that you could use. So let's go inside the main menu and we'll start creating certain things. And the main menu is the one that is visible on the in the top of your online store in the header. So usually you expect to have the first link to be either home or welcome. I like welcome, but sometimes you don't have a lot of space because welcome has more characters than home. So it depends. You can use either or. Sometimes I would even recommend creating a page called getting started or uh, start here. So it's a nice way of holding people's hand and actually helping them guide them through the online experience, the shopping experience in your online store. And you might guide them, tell them, well, click here, start here, and then here you go. These are the different categories that are available. Just another tactic, but let's make it simple. Let's call it home. And here um, we're gonna simply link it directly to the home page. By default, as soon as I clicked here, the option is right here. You can also search by simply saying, I want to link, let's say to the about page and Shopify will show you all the different options. But in this case right now, we want the home page, and that's the first link that we would like to add. The second link, now there's an option. If you're new, there is a really good story behind the brand. I would tell you, put the next link to be about you. Um, and that could be about you, or it could be our story, for example, you choose. But let's say about, you can put about us, about, again, keep it simple so that you think about mobile devices. And in here, I'm gonna start searching for the about page that we had created. Uh, did I create? No, I called it differently, I think. Our story. So you know what? I'm just gonna keep things. So I'm gonna link to the our story. So the first thing when they come into the website, they see the logo. Oh, that's great. I know what this company sells on the hero. I see it. And then as soon as I look at the menu, I'm like, oh, let me click. Well, who's behind this website before I even show them the products? It's too soon. So again, that's just another tactic of you onboarding them into the brand. Next. Now that people know what it is that you sell, you may want to consider putting in a link to your Let's say, in this case, we're gonna list your products. Um, obviously, some of you are gonna start, you might have two, three, four, five products, and some of you will have hundreds, if not thousands. So depending on your, how you have your catalog, you'll have to start linking to the catalog. Now, let's say, for example, for the purpose of this challenge, to make things easy for you, we're gonna sh put something here, shop. We're just gonna call it shop, let's say. And instead of just linking to a specific category or that, I'm just gonna link to a cap collection that includes all of our products. So all, and usually you have that by default inside Shopify. So if you don't, very simple, go back to the other video, create a collection and say, show all products in stock as a condition. And you have the previous day, I, I think it was yesterday or before yesterday where you just go in and you start creating those collections. So for now, again, for the purpose of this challenge, I'm just gonna link to the main category where people can start shopping for uh, the products. Now, if you have one type of product, and let's say for me, I'm building out a store that sells yoga mats only, then I will write yoga mats. You know, straight to the point, why just say shop? But again, for now, let's make it simple because I wanna show you a couple of things there. So we have the shop. Now, when people start shopping, what is it that they may have questions about? They might have questions about shipping. They might have questions about uh, returns. They might have a questions about whatsoever. So you want to make sure that you link to a help page. And that's where they find question, answers to all the questions they may have about your company, how you ship, how you deliver things, how you charge, is it US, Canadian dollars, you name it. Now that we've given them an opportunity to reach, uh, to get help self-serve themselves, the last thing I would tell you is consider also adding um, a link to your contact page. 
right here, pages, and we have contact us. And you can put contact us or, you know what, sometimes it's okay to be a little bit more specific. Contact us. These are the main pages that we would need to cover. Now, again, remember when I did the video, uh, when we covered collections, there are certain collections that people will look for, uh, and that would apply to any type of store. So, for example, um, we have something called new arrivals. When, new, when customers come into the website for the first time, a lot of people like to buy the recent products that they, you just received. So, again, if you have space within your online store, do that. So, we'll add the collection new arrivals which we had created earlier on. And I'm going to show you some tricks here. And then also, remember when I told you that everyone likes a deal and you want to make sure that you have also a quick link to what, whatever is on sale. So you can call it on sale. You can sale, promotion. And I forgot to add this page. Let's do this. So let me save this. I want to make sure all pages are taken care of. So I'm going to go inside products. I forgot to create uh, on sale. So create collection, sale. I'm not going to fill all that stuff. Let's say um, everything is tagged with, I'm just going to make it manual for now for the purpose so we can move ahead. So it's right there. You can tag products that are on sale or specific categories. You might assign it to the on sale category, you name it. So there's a, you have multiple ways of going at it. So I'm going to go back to my navigation and just add inside the main menu. If you guys have questions, make sure to comment in the video and I'm going to get to them. And I'm going to put on sale. Search it. There you go. Save. Okay, so now um, I like putting new arrivals before everything else. Now that is if I have, for example, I'm gonna do this yoga equipment, let's say. Let's say I'm selling, I have a lot of different categories. And when people are gonna click on yoga equipment, there's a drop down. I'm gonna show you what we'll do. But then I like to put on sale right after, let's say, I'm gonna put this right here. So new arrivals, shop everything that we have in the catalog and look at things that are on sale. That's how I like to order them. Again, there's no right or wrong. Do what you want, but eventually start paying attention to these things to see which pages drive the most traffic. I'm gonna save this and I'm going to refresh the page. Let me just change the size a little bit. Okay, so again, you see right here, the menu is going to have certain issues. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna increase the size, see what happens. Certain uh, elements of the menu will start going on a second line. You don't want that to happen. If that's the case, so what I would tell you to do is, again, you can't control every screen that someone would use when, when they come to your website. So you wanna make sure that the design uh, is gonna work for everyone. So what I'm gonna do here is, just to make sure that things would work. I'm gonna put about instead of our story. And instead, you know, I like, I like on sale, uh, yoga equipment, your rivals, contact. Let's say I'll put it like that. People are very like, they're, they're very savvy when it comes to shopping online. They, they know how websites work now. So if that was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, okay, maybe you don't want to be too creative. But right now, people expect to see, oh, contacting means contact, you know? So don't worry if you take off a word. And if you start seeing people complain, then you want to adjust the names of your categories. I say always rely on data. So again, see right here, I cleaned it up. Looks still good. What I like about this is when somebody is browsing and they're not sure what is it that we sell in yoga, they see one thing right here that says yoga equipment. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. I know what they sell. So there you have the main navigation. Now, what if you have a sub menu of yoga equipment? So for example, um, I have mats that I sell and where do I put this? So what you do is you create yoga mats, you link to that collection, you add it. And then what you do is you move it, you drag it and you put it under the main 
category. What's going to happen is I'm going to save that and I refresh. Notice how now there's an arrow on yoga equipment. And when I click it, I have yoga mats. If somebody clicks on yoga equipment, they're going to see everything or not in this case because I've enabled this. But if they click on yoga equipment and then it opens up the drop down, they can go directly to yoga mats. Now, because of the fact that maybe you want to create a link that simply links to all products, make people like that sometimes. What I will do is I'm going to go in inside here under yoga equipment, yoga mats, because now I have sub a sub menu. This is not working anymore. I'm going to create a new one called shop all products. And I'm going to look for products. All products. And I click add. There you go. Click here. Save. Uh, refresh, sorry. And there you have it. So yoga mats, shop all products. Let's say you have a category called bestsellers. And you don't have space right here in your menu. So what I would do is I would go inside products and that's with time. Let's say as you launch the store, you start selling products. You want to create one called bestsellers. And here I'm going to automate. I'm going to say, uh, I might just, you know what? I'm going to look for, let's say you might have a tag called bestsellers and you just put them in there. I'm just going to, and I, there is an automated page inside. Uh, there's an automated, I don't, I don't want to, it's a little bit too advanced. So just have it there. And then eventually there is a way for you to build out a bestsellers page collection. You'll just have to Google or Shopify help how to create a bestsellers collection. And they have the instructions there. So let's say I'm just going to say, put everything that has uh, a tag. Eventually it's going to be called bestsellers. But for now, I'm just going to put machine, machine washable just for the purpose of this exercise right here. And then I'm going to go back inside, sorry, the online store, navigation. And let's say I have a lot of categories, uh, yoga equipment. I have a pair, let's say uh, the blocks, water bottle, mats. Uh, I, I don't know all the other accessories that usually people use in yoga. And then I'm going to say, you know what? Under here, I'm just going to put a category called bestsellers. Again, people look for these things. What happened now? Best. Keep seeing it. And... There we go. Sometimes there's a refresh, I guess. And I'm going to put, for example, bestsellers, the first thing that people see, because that's what they like. Then they start browsing all the different categories of products and then shop all products, let's say. Again, there's no right or wrong. Just make sure that people are able to browse everything. Refresh. I'm going to reduce the size a little bit. Go right here, home page. I click on home, let's say. And then you have all of these here. Bestsellers, yoga mats, shop all products. Okay. Now, I don't, I don't always like the home. Reason being, you, people usually are used to clicking on the logo and they go back. But again, put it in the beginning see what happens, and then from there, take decisions based on what you see in analytics. So that's the um, navigation. Now, we're going to talk about now the footer. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to go inside the footer. So usually the first thing I would add inside the footer is the contact page. That's usually you guys are used to. You go in the bottom of the footer, immediately you click on that. So let's do this. Pages, contact us. There you go. So, and then, so you have to contact us. Then we're gonna put, I always recommend to link to the shipping page. Oh. Again, I remember I, I didn't do this. So shipping page in this case for the demo, I don't have a page created yet. Again, because we decided to put everything under help. But if you have a shipping page, then link to it directly. Or in this case, I'm going to link to the help page. But I use the word shipping because there is a shipping section there. I'll do that. I'll add a section called payments. 
Again, send them to the help page because there's a paragraph where we cover this. I click on add. People are gonna look for the returns policy. And I'm gonna look for return. They wanna know that. Then I'm gonna make sure that we have a link to, so we've covered the returns policy, da, 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 all these things. Now, in this case, because of, let me just save this because I wanna see how this theme is designed. I'm gonna refresh. Great, we have all of that. Now, we need to make sure there are links to the uh, legal pages. I'm gonna put them here. Uh, that's the best way to get started. Sometimes you have themes that allow you to put additional links right here in the bottom of the page. But for now, we just wanna make sure we include them so we don't forget. So I'm gonna click on that. We have a privacy policy. Uh, yeah, privacy policy created one of those pages. We're gonna fill it out later on in the challenge. And we have terms and conditions. We put this page as well. Now you guys know why I had you create all of these pages earlier on, even if you don't have any content, because this is gonna help. Um, this is where we need them. You can leave the search here, it's not a big deal. Um, I would move it, I'm just gonna move it under contact us, let's say. Sometimes if you have a theme that has, let's say, multiple, I was gonna show you my finger, multiple uh, different, multiple areas in the footer that allows you to put multiple groups of links, then you can create another one for, let's say, quick links to the main categories or additional uh, links to, let's say, social media, you name it. But for now, because this theme has limited uh, space, it has only one section called quick links, we're gonna use that. So in here, I did everything. I'm gonna click on save and I'm going to refresh. And there you have it. So you have contact us, search, shipping, payments, privacy policy and terms and conditions and the, all that stuff is right here. So we've covered all of those. Now, let's say for example, I would like to change the name of this here. Um, quick links. I think it's going to be inside the theme. I click on customize and every theme is different. So understand that there might be a lot additional options that you may have if let's say, especially when you buy some premium themes. But one thing you want to understand is you could change the menu inside your theme by going to the customization option where I'm at right now. So let's say, for example, I want to change something in the header. Anything pertaining to the menu, I can change it here. So let's say you have a holiday menu. All you have to do is enable it here by selecting it and you're done. So that's where you would go. Um, in our case right now, we have one menu for the top. And then if I click on the footer, you can see the different options that you have available. So uh, payment methods. Oh, I forgot. Let's show that later on. So you see right here, it showed that you accept Amex, PayPal, um, Apple Pay, Google Pay, all that stuff. We're going to set those up later on in the day. So you can show it right now if you want, but we're going to cover that topic. Um, you can add a language selector if you have multiple languages for your online store. Um, currency at this point right now, there's only one currency, um, but when you set up a payment, you can offer these options. But right here, here's what I wanted to change. Quick links. Let's say I want to call it uh, yoga shop, the name of the store, let's say, instead of links or customer care. You know, let's call it customer care. I'll save that and you see how it looks right here. So I change it from quick links to customer care. Now there, is, there are additional sections right here. Okay, so you can change all of that. Let me see if I can add a second menu. Oh yeah, I can add another menu. There you go. So you can add an additional menu right here if you want. And let's say you call it, I don't know, social media, or you might have a wholesale division, or you might have additional, pay, your blog and everything else. You may wanna put that there. Let's say, I'm just gonna use the same one, but here's what I'm gonna do. Let's say, for example, shop, call it, and then I'm gonna move it right after customer service. There we go. That's nice. So you can have two different menus if you want, just create a new one, add new links to it, and that's it.
So this theme has a, that, you know what? I love this theme because it has so many options already. So I'm just going to remove it right now. But now you get an idea of how it works if you were to um, want to add additional menus in your footer. I'm going to remove the content so it's gone. Everything is saved. And we are done. Refresh the page. You guys see, not a single piece of code. It's all available to you with a couple of clicks. And you're done. That's how you create navigation menus for your header and also for your footer. Any questions about what we covered today? I was about to say it's pretty quiet, but I, like it's not as if I'm hearing anybody from day one. <laughs> All right, so. I'm seeing people, okay. Katrina's in Wisconsin, Ali in Laval. Yeah, the weather. You guys are answering these questions. I not a single question about menus. Was it clear? Is it easy? That's a, it's a good sign you don't have any questions, but if that's the case, then great. So today's task is your to-do. Make sure you log in into the task on Facebook and put a store right here. Go inside units and all the way to the bottom. Day 11 right here. Um, so make sure you cover, uh, make sure to add all of the links to all the pages that you have. And when you're done, click on the done button so that you keep track of your progress within the group. Again, just a reminder, you guys clicking on done will allow you to have this thing right here so you know where you left off. And again, don't forget to sign up to the events because those videos are live. Obviously, later on, there won't be any more live, excuse me, any more live videos. Everything's going to be recorded. You can get back to it whenever you want at your own pace. But make sure you sign up to all these events that are coming up. And we're going to be done soon. So 10 days left. Make sure there are no questions. No, nope, I don't see any questions. So you know what? We'll leave it at that. Let's stay within the schedule. Thank you very much for attending day 11. I hope you guys will have a beautiful rest of the evening. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 12 at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.